Hey everybody, today we're talking about Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 17, Clone Saga. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina. Today we're talking about the Clone Saga, not of regular Spider-Man. This is Ultimate Spider-Man. This is nine issues. This is the tail end of Bendis and Bagley's run. Bagley sticks around for one more volume, and we know Bendis keeps, continues to tell Ultimate Spider-Man stories after this, but we are at the almost closeout of um, their, their legendary 111-issue run. Um, and Jack and Stan, I think, had 103. So I believe this still stands as like the most issues from a writer and artist consecutively, right? Um, so what is Clone Saga? Well, Clone Saga is a reimagining of all the iterations of the classic Amazing Spider-Man Clone Sagas. You have a version of the Jackal in here, kind of. You have clones of Gwen Stacy, clone of Peter Parker, multiple clones. And um, it's Bendis' take on the whole thing. And to be honest, like I was excited to get to this point because I remember reading this when I picked it up from Barnes & Noble back in the day, uh, you know, 15 years ago or so, I don't, I don't remember exactly when it came out, but being like, wow, this is so cool. But reading it all together, he moves very fast through this thing. There's four different Peter clones in here, none of which we really get to know, all of which are kind of disposed of. The only other major character we kind of do get to know is the female Peter clone, which they name as Jessica Drew, uh, Spider-Woman. Uh, she just kind of shows up here in two issues and then bounces. And we get this kind of weird thing I really didn't like where um, Bendis brings back Ben Parker. We'll just say that. And that seemed really hokey at first here in issue 100. Uh, and I was like, what is going on? And then as the volume closes out, it kind of becomes a uh, just not sad in terms of the tale. Like it is a little bit sad, but it's sad in that the way that Bendis didn't have any balls to stick with it, I guess is what I would say. It's quickly wrapped up and it becomes apparent as you get into the issues and, you know, people start going to hospitals that this is not Ben Parker. Maybe, maybe it's not. Is it? Is he still dead? I don't, you know, I don't want to give it away for you, but I didn't like the way that this turned into something else. Um, especially with the part here where like May's acting like she knew that was a little weird. She did know for a little bit. But this is also the volume where um, May finds out a whole lot of things about her life. We'll just say that. Uh, the Ben Ben thing being uh, what seems to be the most shocking for, for us, the readers, then quickly falls apart. Like the tale is not really true as he's telling it. And that's the sad part. Um, you have some more villains popping up in here. Like the, the main, not the main one, the first guy you see is a scorpion. And this guy is a, uh, a clone of Peter. He's one of the Peter clones, so he's kind of done away with. So I don't think we ever see the Scorpion again in the Ultimate Universe, at least the old one. Um, so that's kind of weird. But you have the usual Ultimate characters, Doc Ock, Nick Fury, uh, Mary Jane, Kitty Pride, The X-Men are in here. The Fantastic Four are in here. There's like a whole Ultimate cast. Even the, Aven the Ultimates show up, not the Avengers. In the, this, this universe of the Ultimates. They show up here towards the end, just kind of poke their head in like, hey, we're, don't forget about us. We're all one connected universe. Um, but yeah, I think this storyline focuses way too much on moving Peter from shocking moment to shocking moment to shocking moment all across town in one night, as opposed to like, there's no, it's so fast moving. He, he never takes time to breathe or process, really ask hard questions or think about how this is possible. It's, the story is moving so fast from one beat to the next that you're on like a, a, a white knuckle pace moving from scene to scene. It reads really quickly, um, but it just doesn't give any lasting thing to Peter at the end of the day. And I think that's the most down part about it, rereading this after so many years. Like I remember reading this and thinking it was awesome, but after all that, it doesn't really add anything to Peter uh, to this Peter Parker. It just puts him through more trauma, more things he didn't deserve, and it doesn't really add anything, you know, to the lore other than maybe this Gwen Stacy's back or not. Um, so that is, is kind of disappointing. So all in all, I was really looking forward to this, and the art is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, Bagley's still 
the king of Ultimate Spider-Man here. There's some wonderful panels in here, some wonderful splash pages. But we're getting into the, the era of Ultimate Spider-Man where things go from you know one page to the next. And you got to look and just make sure, oh yeah, there's a panel edge right here. I got to read across instead of, you know, left page, right page, like you usually do. And even some of the pages where there are, um, at least in my volume anyway, where there are like borders and stuff, the, the bleed is so small that it's, you know, it's hard to tell that if, you know, the gutter loss is so, is so tight. It's hard to tell if you're on a single page or a double page spread, things like that. So I had a, not difficulty reading it that way, but just I had to check myself every couple of pages to be like, all right, what's going on here? Like this one here, clearly it's a double page spread, but this is one of those things about Ultimate Spider-Man that I, I kind of hated at the time. I'm still kind of not liking it here where I'd much rather have you just have left and right as opposed to this two page thing with, you know, unfortunately, Ben Parker's head kind of cut off here in the middle of the book. So yeah, I bet in an omnibus it reads, that, that part also reads terrible. Like this page, I open back up to this one also. Uh, it's Ben and um, this guy's Gyrick, I think, Henry Peter Gyrick. He works for the CIA, uh, a tale of how they got together and things like that. So there's also like the, the unexplainedness of it all towards the end. You know, once you find out what's really going on and Doc Ock shows up, there's still kind of no answers as to like why this was going on or who. Um, there's, it's kind of explained, but it's never explained as much as they tried to give you the fake story that Ben Parker was telling in the middle of issue 100. And I think that's the part that let me down. They spend so much time telling you this fake story that you never find out the real story of why there are these Peter clones other than, you know, Doc Ock yelling whatever he's yelling in the final fight here. So, yeah. That's my take on Clone Saga. I think it was a, it's a fun read, but it's kind of disappointing in that it really doesn't add anything to Spider-Man at this point. And this being like the penultimate thing for Bendis and Bagley, that feels kind of sad. So yeah, I, I was thinking this was gonna be the, the more top tier volumes, but man, this is kind of middle of the pack for me right now. Not the worst, it's still a fun read, but it just didn't add anything, and I think that is the biggest disappointment. So let me know what you guys think of the Ultimate Clone Saga down below in the comments. We'll see you guys next time in the Funny Pages.